歡迎大家。Welcome to today's update on COVID-19 press briefing. We have with us Under Secretary for Food and Health, Dr. Choi Tak Yi, and Head of Communicable Disease Branch of the CHP Center for Health Protection, Dr. Chong Shok Kwan, and Chief Manager of the Hospital Authority, Dr. Sarah Ho. We'll first hear from Dr. Choi. Good afternoon, everyone. We have in the fifth wave, the number of uh, positive cases dropping from a peak of over 50,000 a day to the current figure of 7,000. This figure is still very high. It's f f over 40 times of the daily record of 149 cases uh, per day in the previous waves. So we still have to remain vigilant. The current strategy is reduction in cases of infection, serious condition, and death. We also have three important areas, namely an important group, organizations, and locations. Priority is also given to elderly people. In order to avoid infection, you have to observe good personal hygiene and stay socially distanced. In addition to that, Frequent testing and vaccination will also achieve the objective of early identification and early treatment. So far in the fifth wave, the number of reported deaths has exceeded 7,000. And in the age group between 60 and 69, the death rate is 8.4%. 8, 8, those between 70 and 79 is 16.5%. And those above the age of 80 is 71%. And for those staying in the ICU, uh, for the age group 60 to 69, the percentage is 34.8%. Those between 70 and 79 is 27%. And those above the age of 80 is 22.5%. And of these age groups, if there is, if you are vaccinated, the death rate can be greatly reduced. The difference is three to five times. Currently, the vaccination rate among elderly people is still not ideal. As at the 30th of March, for the age group between 70 and 79, um, there are still 102,000 people not vaccinated, which accounts for about 18% of that age group. And for those above the age of 80, currently there are about 42% of the people of the of this age group, that is 170,000 people who have not been vaccinated. That means currently over 270,000 people of those above the age of 70 is unvaccinated. And according to uh, information of the Department of Health, the more doses one received, the lower the death rate. But in, in order to promote vaccination rate among elderly people, the government has uh, left no stone unturned. For those above the age of 60, they can go to the community vaccination center to get same day ticket. On top of that, um, there are also dedicated vaccination centers for children, youngsters, and elderly people. For those above the age of 65, they can also go to the 11 elderly health center under the Department of Health to receive coronavirus vaccination. And on top of that, if you are staying at home and don't want to go to the vaccination center, there are also many different ways for you to receive your vaccination at home. Well, at the same time, well, uh, outreach services have been extended to care home for the elderly and the disabled. On top of that, registered doctors will also visit 1,100 care homes before the middle of April to offer outreach service um, no less than two times per month uh, per, per care home. Well, for those above the age of 70, only 60.33 Three three percent of those who have been double vaccinated, and only eight point two percent of uh, this age group has received three doses. Our target is that before the end of April, those above the age of seventy and those staying in elderly care homes will receive uh, the first uh, dose, and that figure should be uh, is to be pushed to ninety percent. And I appeal to elderly people to get vaccinated as soon as possible, and um, their families to try to convince elderly people to get vaccinated. And in order to achieve early identification amongst um, elderly people, 
Well, we have uh, res restrictions and testing, declarations and compulsory testing, and testing arrangement for care home for the elderly. These are effective ways uh, to early identify infected cases. And also, there is also the voluntary service available for elderly people to go to community testing centers and mobile sample collection centers to receive a free testing service. For the coming two weeks, uh, we still have available uh, online appointments. In order to encourage um, members of the public, including elderly people, to get tested at home, uh, we have arranged for our uh, to we have made arrangements uh, for these kits to be available. We thank the central authorities for their coordination so that we can procure a large amount of RAT kits within a very short time. Currently, uh, volunteer voluntary workers are distributing RAT kits. Um, provided by the government or from donation to people who are in need. Starting from the end of um, this week, the government will distribute anti-epidemic service pack to uh, every household. But it is very easy to use the RAT kits. And elderly people, if they find it difficult, they may, t they may make use of the video clips online or ask their young family members to help. Once again, I appeal to you all to abide by the social distancing measures. And please remind one another to refrain from going out. Please don't go to uh, crowded places or places with poor ventilation. Avoid cross-family gatherings, especially, activ especially activities involving the taking off of masks. And I also appeal to members of the public to avoid uh, going to um, grave sweeping this weekend or um, um, the uh, Chimney Festival. We recorded 2,859 PCR positive cases and 3,787 RAT positive cases. Altogether, the total tally stands at 6,646 cases. Cumulatively, we have now recorded 1.144784 million. Uh, cases in the fifth wave of the epidemic, and um, uh, that's uh, 702,514 PCR positive cases and 402,270 cases. Now, of the 2,858 2, PCR positive cases, 458 were reported by hospital authority, 297 reported via the public health laboratory uh, service, and uh, the remaining, two, remaining 2,104 cases reported by private laboratories. And among yesterday's recorded cases, we conducted genome sequencing on 1,128 cases, and so far, no case has been detected to carry the L452R strain. And 1,105 cases are L452R negative. For the remaining 13 cases, they're either in the pending status or having low viral load. There are also seven imported cases recorded yesterday, including two uh, cases of crew members um, who arrived in Hong Kong by, uh, from Germany on the 30th of March and five visitors, uh, two from Thailand, two from Tahiti, and one from Indonesia, and two from Indonesia, and one from U uh, United Ar Arab Emirates. And we don't have any uh, outbreak of cases in residential care homes today, and there are about 120 residents testing positive um, residing in care homes. As for death cases, today the hospital authority reported 119 more death cases and the deceased tested COVID positive. So altogether, uh, 7,441 uh, cases together with 119 death cases have been reported, and that's 7,493 coming from the HA, and also 49 non-HA reported cases. So the total death tally stands at 7,612. The age of the deceased ranged from 11 months to 112, uh, with a median age standing at 86. They include 
3,079 females and 4,533 males. As for the uh, fatality rate, uh, the rate is 0.66%. And again, for the unvaccinated, the fatality rate stands at 3.08%. For those with one dose, 0.9%. Those with two doses, 0.13%. Three doses, 0.03%. So clearly, this is far below the rate for the unvaccinated. Even for those above the age of 80, the fatality rate is on the high side. Uh, that's 9.59%. Uh, for the unvaccinated and above the age of 80, the fatality rate is 16.3%. That's a very high rate. For those who received one jab, that's a 50% cut, that's 6.6%. .6 for two jabs, 3.36%. So that's four to five fold difference for those unvaccinated and the vaccinated. And also for those with three jabs, 0.9%. So that's an 18 times difference. So for members of the public who have not received three jabs, please do so as quickly as possible. Dr. Ho will report on hospital authorities' situation. At the moment, we have 10,466 patients receiving treatment at public hospitals, North Lantau Hospital, Hong Kong Infection Control Center, Hospital Authority Infectious Disease Center, as well as the um, COVID treatment facility at AWE. We reported 13 patients last night in critical condition, 33 patients in serious condition, and so far 84 patients in critical condition are receiving treatments in our ICU units. As of um, Midnight tonight, over the past 24 hours, altogether 102 COVID positive patients passed away, and they were 58 males and 44 females between the age of 56 and 105. And among the death cases recorded yesterday, 53 of them were care home residents, 67 had no vaccination record, 50, uh, 25 had one jab, and nine had two jabs, and one had three jabs. 97 patients were elderly people above the age of 65. And we also recorded a number of uh, younger patients passing away. The first one, 56-year-old male, a cancer patient, and two others, one, a 56-year-old female, the other, a 59-year-old male. Again, these two patients had chronic illnesses. Because of data lagging, let me report that between the 23rd of March and the 29th of March, 17 more patients passed away and they have not been reported. They include 13 males and four females uh, between the age of 62 and 98. And uh, in a, uh, yesterday, four, uh, 1,416 patients have been discharged upon recovery and 10 or so patients have been found to be positive upon hospital admission screening and 20 Patients are regarded as close contact. For HA staff, so far 21,164 staff members have been uh, diagnosed, and uh, uh, 18,839 of them have um, already uh, recovered and resumed duty. As for oral medication, as of the 30th of March, the public hospitals already prescribed oral medication uh, of the two kinds for 21,600 patients. The hospital authority strives to uh, prescribe oral medication to treat COVID-19 as far as possible. Now, for public hospitals, um, community uh, tr uh, treatment facilities and holding centers, oral medication can be prescribed. There are also elderly patients now receiving treatment in these facilities and earlier, um, they received treatment in public hospitals and they are now in convalescence and uh, elderly patients will be discharged once they have a negative test result. And the holding centers recently have also been taking referrals uh, from hospitals in relation to patients with mild sy symptoms. These are elderly patients and on arrival, the medical post um, medics will first conduct assessment and if deemed to be suitable, they will be prescribed with oral medication. And uh, these 
drugs to be arranged to be sent to holding centers. For example, in the morning, once we re received an instruction for oral medication to be prescribed at the holding center concerned, in the afternoon, the medication can be dispatched to the holding center uh, in question. And we also have a function in our mobile app, and this app um, has been enhanced. We have this mobile app called HA Go, and there is a function called a booking uh, for designated clinics. And starting from noon tomorrow, we will implement a second phase expansion. Members of the public can update the mobile app, and then without uh, going through the registration as an HA member, a member of the public can make booking via the app. So even if you have not been registered with the HA system, if you have not ever received HA service, and if you have other forms of identity documents, you will be eligible for HA services. Since introduction of the appointment service uh, on the 18th of March, over 14,000 patients have made booking successfully for designated clinic consultations via the app. The app is suitable for those who have previously been registered with the HA system. Now it is question time. Please identify your organization and keep your questions succinct. Uh, the one in red at the back. I'm from Orange News. I have the following questions. Well, the number of confirmed cases is uh, down by about 300 cases. However, uh, Dr. Ho of Hong Kong U said on the radio show that he was concerned that with the relaxation, there might be a rebound. He reminded uh, different sectors that we should not be over overly optimistic. But what do you say to that? Well, there are reports are saying that the government's considering relaxation of um, there are certain restrictions of air crew, including uh, on arrival testing and a permission of uh, closed loop mani man um, uh, management. And as, uh, under certain conditions, uh, they are allowed to uh, go out into the community. So what do you say to that? And this morning, the chief executive said that, that the two oral medications could be prescribed at holding centers. So. What is the demand at uh, holding centers currently? Perhaps I will answer first. Thank you for your question. We believe that in the fifth wave, the number of infected cases may be lower. But as I said in my speech, that people should, all should remain vigilant because there is always a chance of a rebound. Looking back at previous waves, one single case who is a super carrier will call, would cause a rebound. So we should not let our guard down, even though that the number has dropped to 7,000 from over 10,000. One should not think that uh, the worst has passed. We should all abide by social distancing measures and avoid from attending uh, gatherings and go to or go to places where it's crowded. And we think that in relation to prevention of imported cases and curbing of community transmission, we have to be very cautious. In relation to air crew members, we take into account the development of the epidemic before making adjustments. We will tread very carefully before we decide what to do in the next um, stage. The principle is is that we should not uh, um, do anything to affect the current situation. Dr. Ho, previously, holding centers are for people who are recovering after they've been discharged from hospitals, and they are waiting for a negative result. If need be, the patients might have already been prescribed these uh, oral medication start starting from the, a few days ago uh, holding centers may receive elderly people sent directly from care homes for the elderly and we've started prescribing oral medication in holding centers 
I'm from Dot Dot News. From the 29th to now, how many patients have been sent to holding centers? Uh, how much is that change? Care homes said that they apply for their residents to be transferred to holding centers, but they have not heard anything about it. So for some centers, uh, there are surplus beds, and for some other centers, um, there is a shortage of beds. The chief executive said that at the end of the week, there will be anti-epidemic service kit distributed. Within a very short time, there will be uh, RAT tests for everyone. What's your view on this plan? Is it feasible? Will it be compulsory? Will this replace the uh, universal PCR test? There are about 750,000 people unvaccinated in Hong Kong. Some experts said that perhaps uh, people have received false information and uh, misunderstood these about this and have made some misunderstanding about the safety of vaccines. Would you enhance your publicity and public education to disseminate correct information about vaccines to the public so that you can um, break through this bottleneck? This morning, the chief executive talked about the distribution of service kits, which contain various items, including RAT kits, masks, proprietary Chinese medicine. RAT has been improving all in different places for some time because, well, it can be self-administered. It takes a very short time. It's rather sensitive, and you don't need too much manpower and equipment support. So it is an effective screening tool. At the beginning of the fifth wave, before that was the peak, everyone was very concerned, and there was and. A lot of people were scrambling for RAT kits. Once again, I thank the Central Authority for their coordination to enable us to procure a large number of RAT kits for the use of our population. Members of the public can now use the RAT as and when needed. As to how they can use the RAT kits in the service kits. You may refer to the details which will be disseminated later. We ask members of the public to remain vigilant. Strictly observe good um, infection control measures and frequently use RAT kits to be tested. We now have effective oral medication to reduce the risk of fatality and serious cases. And we've always accorded priority to the elderly people. Since the launch of the vaccination program, we've made use of different avenues to explain the merits of the vaccine. That includes the expert panel. They make use of their own uh, position in the discipline, say, for example, for those uh, who are uh, in the medicine uh, discipline, they would explain to their um, groups of patients. Every week, there, there are analyses conducted in relation to um, vaccination, say for example, the death rate. It's a decision. We've always emphasized that we need to protect our elderly citizens. So we ask their family members uh, to convince them to get vaccinated so that there will be better protection for them and uh, to protect them from serious cases. The holding center is under the charge of the social welfare department. 
the hospital authority is in charge of health care. If you want to know about the figures, you may need to go to the SWD, the, uh, the lady in green. I'm from cable TV. Today, we have uh, 6,000 or so cases. For a few weeks, it's a four-digit figure. What's your assessment? Are we towards the end of the current wave? This morning, the chief executive said that the use of RAT can give us an assessment of the current situation. How do you assess its effectiveness? How do you ensure that um, citizens will report their cases after using the RAT? Are there any penalties? The next question is for the HA. Well, for holding centers, seven of them, the usage rate is less than 30%, which is rather low. Will the HA talk to the SWD for new ways to better use uh, beds in order to alleviate pressure faced by hospitals? The fourth question is for Dr. Choi. Well, the a penalty for uh, contravention of uh, CTNs as well as um, RTDs have been enhanced. Is it because more people have flouted these notices? Well, um, the penalty is twenty. It says that it will be twenty-five thousand, and now it said that it's fifty thousand. Why is there such a sudden change? Uh, wouldn't it cause? Uh, wouldn't it make people difficult to um, get used to it? Let me take your question. This morning, the chief executive uh, commented on the RAT test and details will be disclosed in due course. And I'd like to stress that RAT is a convenient tool for people to get tested at home. And basically, every citizen will be able to get tested and get identified early should they test positive. And details will be announced soon. about um, adjustments to different penalty levels in relation to uh, CAP 599 offenses. Earlier, we raised the penalty level for breaching um, the uh, CTN requirements. So correspondingly, we need to adjust the other penalty levels uh, under different provisions of the similar legislation in a proportionate manner. So the financial, so the uh, relevant fines meet to be meted out will be adjusted accordingly. The content of the legislation, however, remains the same. We just make corresponding adjustments according to this principle. Perhaps um, clarifications are needed in the first draft of the press release we issued, and that is why in the subsequent press release we made certain corrections. The principle remains the same. Our healthcare staff at the moment arrange uh, suitable elderly patients to get tested by RAT on the seventh day upon the um, discharge. And uh, if suitable, they'll be arranged to return to the residential care home. However, if they still test positive, and if they're in a stable condition, they'll be arranged to be referred to um, isolation facilities or holding centers until uh, they get a negative results uh, via rapid tests. By then, they can be go. Uh, they can return to the residential care homes. Doctor Zhang, uh, we are. Uh, seeing a slow decline, but the level remains high. We record 6,000 plus cases today. Now, comparing to the situation, the first four waves, we had uh, peaks at about 100 cases. So we must bear in mind that several thousand cases represent a very high level, despite a drop from over 10,000 cases. So we should remain vigilant. Next. This lady on the right, I'm from Now TV. First question about the new function in your HA Go app. Can you tell us uh, how you expect the enhanced function to, to uh, help 
and will actually be able to cope with the demand. And about mainland medical experts' arrival in Hong Kong, what exchange has taken place between the HA and uh, CHP and the mainland experts? And so what are the areas of uh, further enhancement in terms of using Chinese medicine to fight the epidemic? And about oral medication, earlier it was said that negotiations are underway with private clinics. Is there any update you can give us? When can oral medication be prescribed at private clinics? And about the quantity of uh, drugs available for private hospitals, is there room to increase the quantity? The next question is this. Um, earlier, it was said that an, a, a reporting platform will be set up for recovered uh, patients. When will it be commissioned? Dr. Ho, about the mobile application, we have a second phase enhancement. Previously, the app is only available for users who have been registered with the HA system or who have used the HA services before. Now with the app's enhancement, even if you have not been registered with the HA system, even if you don't have an ID card and haven't used our services before, you can still make a booking via the mobile app. So we are trying to make it uh, more available to uh, the uh, to uh, the uh, general public, and we have quotas available at the designated clinics. If you're unwell, you can make use of this mobile app to make a booking, or you can ring the hotline. Especially when we have a special quotas um, available for higher risk groups. So these special quotas will be available for use at the designated clinics. I understand that the mainland medical expert team has um, chat, um, uh, has um, met with uh, the uh, chief executive of the hospital authority and other members of the healthcare profession in terms of using. Um, Chinese medicine in the HA system in treating COVID patients. We have exchanged views, and we have also uh, reported our developments to them, and we've also exchanged our experience. Uh, we will also take reference from the mainland experience so that we can further implement and fulfill the goal of a three reduction strategy. As for oral medication in private hospitals earlier, we have streamlined the procedures. A significant quantity of oral medication can be uh, obtained on loan in one go so that they can have their own reserve. We allow private hospitals more flexibility as a result. As for the platform for um, patients who have recovered from COVID, I think the concern uh, is how the recovered patients can show proof of their status uh, at the premises where vaccine pass requirements are to be complied with. So there are different ways. For example, they can make use of the Department of Health platform to prove that uh, they have now been recovered from uh, COVID and that but it is not convenient for persons in charge of premises, and we are now uh, in the process of establishing a platform for the purpose. The platform will be available in May, so I ask for the public's patience. Next question. I'm from AM730. The HA just now mentioned that um, the oral medication at holding centers will not be dispatched until instructions are received. Will arrangements be made so that private hospitals can keep a reserve of oral medication for um, prescription, or is it uh, are there legal constraints? Next question. Uh, it is said that for the um, declaration of RAT positive results platform, emails can be uh, sent to the CHP for uh, reporting uh, late. And uh, how many such cases have been received? And I understand that 100 plus cases have been removed from the uh, statistics. 
Does it accurately reflect the uh, cases, including the cases from data lagging? Another question. Is it that um, you will take out uh, recovered patients from the list of uh, people to be to receive the RIT or the anti-epidemic uh, service bags so as not to re not to waste resources? There are different needs, but all in all, different members of a household will benefit from the various uh, supplies in the bags, such as information kits, RIT kits, etc. The medics at the medical posts of the holding centers would con would make an assessment, and if the patient is suitable for prescribing oral medication, a form will be filled in, and then the form will be faxed back to the uh, our public hospital. We'll prepare the drugs right away, and then they can uh, obtain them right away. So after doing rounds in the morning, the drugs will be available in the afternoon. It's very convenient. About our ATP platform, I understand that there is difficulty accessing the platform, and there are people who are making inquiries via email. Um, the We are processing these cases. Some cases have been received late. Uh, probably because we once received an application and then the application was only half completed. Um, we have yet to process these cases, including cases that we subsequently conducted inspection. Then we kept out within one go. Two more questions. This lady in black and then the other gentleman. I'm from Ming Pao. Good afternoon. Dr. Ho referred to uh, the uh, prescription of arm oral medication at holding centers. Do you have uh, figures? And CHP and HA have begun to disclose the total number of critical uh, cases and serious cases on the internet. So at this peak during the fifth wave of the epidemic, uh, may I know the total of critical and serious cases? Because I understand that uh, they respectively sent it's 500 and uh, 1100. Uh, have you detected any change in uh, terms of uh, critical case statistics, especially after oral medication is available, comparing to the situation overseas? And also, what is the cumulative uh, number of critical cases in the fifth wave? Um, Dr. Patrick Ho this morning said that it seems that the number of critical cases are lower than the death cases, probably because some patients have passed away before they uh, even arrived at the ICU. Do you have um, figures in relation to that? Next question, the WHO today announced the strategy in response to ending the global pandemic 2022. Is there a similar blueprint for Hong Kong? Will we be able to end the emergency epidemic situation in Hong Kong this year? Uh, there are different case scenarios, and has the government uh, made any plans for different uh, scenarios? Uh, I will answer first. The WHO has expressed their opinion about the epidemic. And of course, everyone in every place would like to see the end of the epidemic. Well, our common goal is to minimize the damage caused by SARS-CoV-2. Currently, we are still in the fifth wave. It's going down very slowly. We should remain vigilant. We should continue to guard against imported cases and community transmission. Scientists may have their interpretation of different topics. We'll leave it to the scientists. We all need to work together. In the context of Hong Kong, that is, we have a high population. We have learned a lot especially during the fifth wave, we need to make good use of the lessons learned.
we need to make good use of resources available to fight the epidemic. Regarding holding centers, it would it's only in the past day or two that they started receiving residents directly from care homes and not many of them have got symptoms. The cases uh, with prescription is only a single digit figure. In relation to people in ICU, well, currently it's about 70% uh, of usage in a negative pressure bed. There is a collaboration plan amongst different hospitals. The ICU is a, is a section where intrusive procedures will be conducted. In the end, we will see how the procedure and the uh, approach c could help patients and the wish of families. That depends on the need. Sorry, the speaker's not using a microphone. We don't, I don't have the figures on hand. The one in black. I'm from Hong Kong 01. Tomorrow, the lift ban will, will be put in place. There may be more imported cases. Would it put pressure on our healthcare system? Can it cope? Well, in every wave, it's, it's triggered by um, an imported case. Previously, the Delta case, it was um, Pakistani woman who was uh, who's infected by the neighbor how do you avoid the same mistake well uh, some experts talked about uh, separate rooms in the uh, quarantine hotel would you take that on board well in the, in the case of treatment for children it may be different do you have a number of serious cases in pediatric patients for covid oral medication they, it may not be suitable for children what treatment are available for young children then? In the distribution of the service packs, can you tell us uh, which type of RAT kits will be in the bag? But that's all for my questions. A uh, strategy to prevent imp imported cases is very vigorous. We have announced that place specific flight bans will be lifted. But we will put in place effective supporting measures to guard against imported case. That includes uh, requirements before they board, um, the arrangements when they arrive at the airport, and um, testing requirements. It will be a very vigorous pro process. We will do better, having learned our uh, lessons in previous waves to deal with an increased number of arrivals. In relation to specifications of hotel rooms, uh, we may and uh, we may ask for enhanced. Um, requirements, say, for example, the use of air purifiers. The test kits in the service bag will be approved ones. Uh, it will be one of the four on the list or uh, one that is approved by uh, relevant authorities in EU, UK or other places. About death cases of pediatric patients, uh, in the fifth wave we have recorded eight pediatric patients that have passed away. There is an 11-month-old um, female, a three-year-old three girl, four-year-old girl, and a four-year-old boy, eight-year-old eight um, girl, and also a 14-year-old boy and a nine-year-old boy. Uh, Obstetrics doctors said that vaccination for pregnant women is safe and proved to be effective in prevention of premature birth. 
and in that way it protects uh, premature babies and for the f it will also reduce the rate of infection for the first six months of newborn babies and it also at the same time reduce the risk of uh, the adult being infected and passes on the virus to the baby in terms of treatment it's more than just oral medication for serious cases we have risk Prescribed interferon, steroid, rem uh, remdesivir. They are prescribed in accordance with the situation. For children that is above the those above the age of three, there are suitable vaccines available. We have already administered a lot of doses, and we appeal to parents to take their children to get vaccinated because prevention is always better than cure. Well, if you uh, catch COVID, you will be treated, but you will suffer from the discomfort. That's why we repeatedly appeal for vaccination. Well, for in the cases of children, we see uh, cr we see croup and upper respiratory uh, infection, and also. Uh, the virus may attack um, neural nerves. Uh. A follow-up question from TVB. I understand that in terms of prevention of importation of cases, the government is now relaxing social distancing measures. What is the CHP's assessment on the lifting the flight suspension mechanism? And more flights are coming back because, like the other reporter just asked, for previous waves, they were all sparked by uh, imported cases. How do you prevent sport imported cases from spreading the virus? And will it cause a double whammy? And be, uh, that is an increase in number of imported cases and uh, no reduction in local cases. And for HA Go, since its rollout, how many users have registered with your app? And about the second phase enhancement, you have relaxed the eligibility criteria. How many more users do you expect to be able to benefit from your service? And about uh, about 90% uh, uh, booking still available in the coming two weeks in testing centers. Do you think that uh, resources should be uh, less resources should be provided for community testing centers? Uh, first, on testing centers, there are two types we have as um, you know testing centers in establishments and also mobile stations so we have regular um, and centers in establishments and mobile booths and according to government policy high risk groups can get tested on a regular basis at these facilities and in the past week, we have resumed the issues of compulsory testing notices, and those subject to the CTNs can get tested at the community treatment centers. So it is always better to get ready and have more uh, capacity available at testing centers to avoid people queuing up again administratively. Of course, improvements should be made. If we have long queues, we should have um, ticketing machines and showing the and also a platform for showing the online uh, sh showing the queue status online testing is a reliable method for preventing the epidemic we'll continue with our effort dr ho for designated clinics as of 1 p.m. today over 102700 users have used our co consultation services at the 23 designated clinics. 13,000 uh, users made a booking via our care hotline. As for the XA Go mobile app, over 14,000 confirmed patients made the booking with us via XA Go. I understand that patients will use different uh, methods, such as the uh, mobile app and the hotline in uh, making a booking with us, and we strive to continue to improve our system. 
for example, like I explained before, uh, there is now no need uh, for you to have used our service or to have registered with us before you can use the app and we strive to continue to improve our system so that it's convenient for everybody to make a booking at the designated clinics. Any supplement from Dr. Chang? In terms of preventing imported cases, we're talking about the prevention of imported cases leading to transmission in the community. It is, of course, very important if we have a zero infection in the community. However, we have extensive transmissions in the community at the moment, and the um, prevalent uh, strain is BA.2 uh, around the world, and that is the same as the strain of extensively tra transmitted in our community at the moment. So we continue to adopt the strategy of early identification and early isolation. Uh, we'll treat imported cases in the same way as local cases. So meanwhile, if even if we have imported cases, it may not pose as much pressure on our system as uh, before. Of course, at the same time, we must monitor whether there are new variant strains, uh, for example, uh, a strain newer than the BA.2 leading to serious complications, uh, outbreaks. Thank you for attending today's press briefing. Thank you.